for, for once, I'm not going to get up in front of anyone here and talk about rates, um, which is kind of a nice thing to bring a, have a break from that. But, but I, I can't agree more with what, uh, with what President Garcetti said re regarding our efforts and our priorities, because we are making a change. We're making a huge change. Not fast enough for some people. Uh, I recognize that and I hear that regularly. Not fast enough for me as well because there is a little bit more cost to get there. But it is really only a little bit more cost to get there, particularly when it comes to the issue of energy efficiency, both energy efficiency and actually water, water conservation as well. But particularly in the area of energy efficiency, of everything that we're trying to do at Department of Water and Power, we're trying to make certain that wherever we can, we can push forward with providing more local jobs associated with everything that we do. We spend a lot of, a, a lot of money uh, overall. We want to have mu much more of that come local and energy efficiency per dollar spent on anything that we do around power supply, and I consider energy efficiency a number one power supply. You get no more jobs than, than, than an energy efficiency on anything else. Energy efficiency is the number one job creator here locally. We want to do more of that. We're going to hear about some of that here today with our utility pre-craft training program. We've been partnering with Lane on this. They have been steadfast supporters of doing that. We want to do more of that. I want to figure out how we can fund it, fund it better and more quickly and bring those jobs into, into, into Pacoima and other parts, parts of LA. So I'm just here to listen here this morning about, about your ideas of how we can help make that happen and get behind it as quickly as we can. Thanks for the opportunity. Department of Water and Power, since we are a municipally um, owned utility, we're owned by you. Um, we don't have stockholders, shareholders, other than you as our, as our citizens who also pay, you know, pay, pay, pay the bills that, that make the organization run. We're, we're have historically, it's changing, but historically, have had different sets of laws that apply to us than apply to the investor-owned utilities who are governed by the California Public Utilities Commission. So, for example, when we establish our budgets for, uh, for LADWP and then the rates to recover those, we have a board of commissioners, and then ultimately those budgets and our rates are approved by a city council. So our city council is our regulator. Whereas if it's Southern California Edison, or Pacific Gas and Electric, or it's, or it's uh, San Diego Gas and Electric, their budgets, if you will, most specifically their rates, are, are determined and approved periodically by the California Public Utilities Commission. And as a result of that, since, there, since there, you know, we have, of course, there's Pasadena, and Glendale, and Riverside, and you know, a number of other municipally owned utilities that we happen to be not just the largest in California, we're the largest in the, in the nation. Um, all of our policies are ultimately established by our board and then by, and then by, and then by city, city council, unless there's some state law that comes around. State laws generally have not been as directed to, to cities because cities govern themselves, largely. Um, and as a result, Energy efficiency is one of those key areas where there's a difference. There has been historically, and I said it's, I said it's changing. Historically, there's been specific requirements for, for the investor-owned utilities, the private utilities, to meet certain requirements. And the way they've done that is to give them actually incentives for those, for those utilities. They say, if you meet certain targets of investment in energy efficiency, We'll let you collect a little bit more rate of return for your shareholders. Well, you know, our, our shareholders are you. So we haven't had that same requirement until we, there is now a law. There is a law that says that we're supposed to get to 10% energy efficiency by 2020. Mm -hmm. And we're working along that. But it's absolute fact that LA has been slower to move on energy efficiency as a result of that than have the investor owned utilities. We want to change that. We do have. We, we, we can't get incentives, you know, paid, you know, allowed, allowed, allowed to us for, for our shareholders because you're our shareholders. So we need to work through, find ways that we can fund these programs more 
faster and to create some of the types of jobs that we're trying to, trying to do. We're working on that. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to, there's an opportunity, I want to dominate the whole discussion here, but I'd like to talk a little bit later, perhaps, about some of the challenges we've had about trying to maintain some consistent programs along that line. But, but the statements that are made here are absolutely right. Uh, we are have not put as much money into energy efficiency um, per customer or as a total of our of our utility bill as the investor-owned utilities have, and we need to change that. Your concern is about large you know, businesses, and a specific example that you indicated was uh, nighttime lighting. Yeah, yeah, the, the dealerships. Right. You know. Uh, that's an issue that came up significantly. Those of you might remember back um, in 2000, 2001, when there was a statewide uh, energy, shortage, yeah. energy shortage, yeah. kind of a manufacturing shortage by some, mm -hmm. by uh -huh. some uh, greedy people that manipulated the power market who were not utilities. But irrespective, during that period of time, there was a there was a law that was put out there to um, to require cutbacks on nighttime nighttime lighting. It was a, it was a temporary temporary one. It was done for reducing power enough literally to have enough power to keep the lights on. LA was never in that situation. LA is its own as its own utility had its own adequate power supply. But um, that the whole issue of coming and requiring businesses to not use use uh, energy at night in, in lighting to uh, try to help basically advertise their businesses is, is a tough one. You know, so instead what we really try to do is deal with deal with saying, let's give them adequate incentives that if they're going to do that, do that more efficiently and, and deal with it. Pricing is the best, you know, is the best uh, mechanism to do that, frankly. We have we have lower rates than, than other utilities. We have lower rates for our commercial customers that burn those lights at night mm -hmm. than they do other in, in Southern California Edison's territory, for example. So, you know, at the end of the day, I don't, you know, certainly the DWP can't go and, and we can't create laws. You know, I think, I guess our city council theoretically could go out and could go out and, and do that. Mm -hmm. I, I think the more appropriate way to go about doing that is to make available programs to educate businesses and, and residential customers about where they can cut back and provide opportunities for incentives uh, for, for them to be able to replace uh, some of those technologies with more, with more efficient ones. And, and, and if I could just take a, a quick minute on that very topic, because um, I'd like to introduce Mike Coya here, by the way, of LEU. Mike, Mike has been working uh, very, very directly with our utility precraft training, he and, and, and Sean McLeod here with uh, with IBEW have worked together to create this new class of, of some of the people that we've heard today about learning more about that. That's a, that's a big piece of what we tried to do. We're trying to get people brought in to have this be a part of their jobs, their learning as they get into it. We want to do more of that. We want to fund more of that. But to fund more of those programs goes back to the question, the point that that that, can make. that is, you know, um, we, we need to get some additional budget to do that. I want to make it really clear to every person in this room, LADWP wants to put more money into these programs. It is our number one priority is to get a budget that's not just this year and now that we don't have enough money so it goes down last year. You saw something up here said, I had a program out here, I was on this program, and I need to be a peak at the money. That's absolutely right. We've gone through on a program, we ran out of dollars on it, we didn't have budget enough to do it, we didn't have the rates enough to do it, we had to cancel. That's no way to run a program like this. We need to be able to give our customers assurance that year after year after year, we're going to be there for you. We're going to be there, we're going to fund these programs, we're going to get them done, we're going to ramp them up, not down. And in that process, we want to create more jobs. We want to expand on the UPCT program to be able to bring more people and more jobs here in LA to get, to get this done. Um, we have a, a completely shared goal on that. And council, I think, will be, city council, I think, will be very supportive of that. But that's right. You know, they need cover. They need to know that their constituents want this. So. If, if we get the approvals to do that, we're asking for the approval. You help ask for that approval. We want to fund these fund these programs that create jobs in your community. Thank you. Thank you.